Hello everybody, Jedi Warlock here and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we are returning to the world of Azeroth for a lore theory on one of the most interesting quest lines in Classic WoW. While not the most flashy or action packed, the mystery of Marograin subtly tells the story of a conspiracy within the heart of the Darnassian Druids, and leaves you grasping for more answers that are later revealed following the events of Wrath of the Lich King. In this video, I want to unpack what this questline is all about, explain what happens as a result of these actions you perform, and theorize on some of the environmental conditions that allowed this plot to happen. Also, I just want to give a big thank you to everyone who has liked, commented, or subscribed to the channel recently. I really appreciate your suggestions and feedback, and I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts on this lore video as well. So, with all that being said, let's get right into it and dive into the anomaly that is Marograin. When we talk about Marograin, it's hard not to start at the beginning, a pile of dirt. More specifically, a very rare type of soil found in the volcanic Ungoro Crater in southern Kalimdor. This soil is of great interest to the leader of the Druids of Darnassus, capital of the Night Elves. Archdruid Fandral Staghelm offers a reward to players who venture into the crater and retrieve the precious dirt. The soil of Ungoro Crater is reportedly enriched with potent magical qualities. I want to know facts from falsehoods. Go into the wilds of Ungoro and acquire enough quality samples of soil for our continued study. Bring the samples to Janal. He will handle the logistics, not I. After undertaking the monumental journey to the crater and gathering a large amount of dirt, returning it to Darnassus allows the questline to continue. Unload your precious cargo here. It must have been quite the burden. Not unlike the burden I carry, being a visionary. After this rather cryptic line, speaking to the Archdruid again introduces us to the purpose of collecting all this soil. With what we call an evergreen pouch, we have cultivated Tharlendris seeds in the soil from Angoro. One result of this process is Marograin, a mysterious herb we know little about. I intend to unravel this mystery. By reporting to Fandral's second-in-command, Mithrengal Bearwalker, players learn the process of creating Marograin and returning it to the Enclave to generate item and reputation rewards. After completing this quest once, it converts into a repeatable version that can be completed multiple times. Before we continue talking about the quests, let me summarize how this virtual gardening actually works. Using an item called an Evergreen Pouch, which acts as a portable magic greenhouse, players can combine two scoops of Ungoro soil and a packet of Tharlendris seeds to create an evergreen herb casing, which is basically the product plant in a fancy shell. Opening this shell, you have a chance to find Marograin or mutated Marograin, which is useless. Originally, you would either find Marograin or random herbs, but this was changed in patch 3.2 likely to avoid balance issues that could arise from just pulling herbs out of thin air. Something that isn't included in the game is the original product of Tharlendris seeds, assuming you grew them in normal soil. So for the sake of completion, let's theorize that there is some sort of Tharlendris plant that, when using Ungoro soil on its seeds, instead becomes Marograin. With our biology lesson out of the way, let's get back to the story. Once you reach the repeatable stage of the Darnassus quests, players may feel as though they have reached the end. However, this is not the case, and we're just getting started on the actual conspiracy at work here. Venturing to Feathermoon Stronghold in Feralis, players can now interact with Quintus Jonespire, who has grown suspicious of this secretive Marograin project. Let me be frank with you. I'm interested, nay, concerned with why the Archdruid in Darnassus is using the name of the Cenarian Circle, as well as the Circle's resources, to procure vast amounts of Marograin. I'm a researcher, 
Curses are my specialty. I've heard that Marobrain, under the right conditions, exudes qualities like other herbs used in primitive curses. I want to know more. Now, the quest expectations for both the Darnassus and Feralus variants are pretty much the same. Go gather dirt, make Marograin, get rewarded. But the dialogue is the real difference here. Ah, uh, these Marograin make me feel... weird. What in the name of a loon is Staghelm up to with these? Completing the repeatable version of this quest opens up one final piece of info. Who knows what will happen if Staghelm keeps getting Marograin after Marograin. There's something fishy going on. Mark my words. I will mention there is a horde equivalent to this quest managed by Archdruid Hamul Runetotem in Thunderbluff. However, I'm fairly confident the Tauren don't have a role to play in this conspiracy. Their dialogue is much more neutral, and the druids here just seem interested in replicating the data coming out of Darnassus. In-game, this is as much as we ever learn about Marograin and Fandril's project. For fans who played during Vanilla WoW, it would be six long years until the answers would finally be revealed. After the end of Wrath of the Lich King, Fandril's plot was discovered, and it's well documented within the Stormrage novel from 2010. As most players of Retail WoW know, Fandril was actually an undercover agent of the Old Gods for several years. To subvert the Cenarian Circle from within, Fandril trapped its original leader, Malfurion Stormrage, within the Emerald Dream, a spirit dimension that once offered strength to druids, but is now being corrupted by the Old Gods. After his spirit form was trapped within the Dream, Fandril used the Marograin to poison the druid's physical body, preventing him from escaping back to the real world. Malfurion's comatose state was kept a secret from all but the highest circle of Night Elves, and his body continued to grow weaker and weaker from the long years in the Barrow Dens. All the while, Fandril took control of the druids and kept harvesting Marograin to subtly prolong his former teacher's curse. After the Night Elves discovered this plot, and the events of the novel played out, Fandril was able to flee and serve his masters until the second patch of Cataclysm, where he was defeated as Major Domo of the Firelands. Fortunately, Malfurion was able to escape the Nightmare, and now helps lead the Elves to this day. While the Storm Rage book answered most of the big questions with regard to Marograin, I think two of the remaining ones are, what's so special about Ungoro soil, and has Marograin been used anywhere else? Let's first talk about Ungoro Crater itself, a lush paradise that was once maintained by the Titan Keepers, much like Sholazar Basin. With so much life contained in this area, it's fairly expected that Ungoro could be a hub for connecting with the Emerald Dream. After all, the Emerald Dream is basically an uncivilized mirror of Azeroth, a dimension where life flourishes unchecked, much like the experimental region of Ungoro. During the time of Classic WoW, and probably even before, corruption was seeping into the Emerald Dream from the Old Gods. I believe this soil hiding the corruptive properties that we see in full effect with the Marograin, has been corrupted by the Old Gods. Need more evidence? Well, consider also that Cthune, an imprisoned Old God, is imprisoned just one zone over, in nearby Silithus, and its shackles were beginning to weaken during this time, as we saw in the Rise of the Silithid storyline. Much like the Emerald Dream, being tweaked by the old gods to spiral into madness, I think it's very likely they could have influenced the land here, either directly or through the dream, to secretly corrupt the soil, and only very specific conditions would reveal its true nature. You might be thinking, come on, there's no way this soil is corrupted, in a place that's brimming with life and doesn't really show outright corruption, could it really be? And that brings us to our next destination, the Wailing Caverns 
hidden underneath the barrens. This labyrinth of waterfalls, caves, and pools is the greenest place in the entire zone, and hosts all sort of primordial life not found at the surface. Sure enough, what else is found here? Emerald Nightmare Corruption. In an eerie parallel to Malfurion being caught in the dream, so too are a number of elven druids here, twisted by the nightmare, and now lashing out at their former comrades. Part of me wants to tell Fandral that he doesn't need to go all the way to Ungoro to get this cursed soil. Just try digging around in the barrens for a while. The crown jewel, or crown of the earth in this case, is the condition of Teldrassil. This is going to sound like a stretch at first, but bear with me, I think I have a solid case here. We know Fandral has been under the influence of the old gods since the creation of the world tree, as he would have trapped Malfurion before the tree's creation. I actually stumbled across this idea while working on another video, but it felt like a perfect mini-theory to put here. We know that Fandral played a crucial role in growing Teldrassil off the coasts of northern Kalimdor, and that he was working to serve the old gods at the same time. During the Night Elf starting quests, players discover that parts of Teldrassil are slowly becoming corrupted, from plants, to beasts, to the once peaceful Firbolg. In what is either a stunning coincidence, or a subtle hint by the Blizzard developers, Venturing into the caves of Teldrassil, especially Fell Rock, reveals some strange details. For one, the plants and tropical designs used here feel similar to both Ungoro Crater and the Wailing Caverns, and even features one of the same music tracks heard in the crater. Whether this signifies Fandral was meddling in the growth of the tree from before it was planted, or otherwise began to spread corruption here after it was grown, it seems hard to deny, in my opinion, that these parallels are telling us a story that goes above and beyond what is outright explained. One final addition to this part of the theory can be seen in the Cleft, a hidden cave in the mountains of Teldrassil that serves no purpose in the game. No NPCs or quests are related to this cave, and yet, it is still designated as a unique part of the map. In my opinion, this could have been the pinnacle of the Marograin story that wouldn't have to be explained in a novel. After discovering the truth by assisting Quintus, players could have confronted Fandral, or one of his lackeys, here, and learned the truth about the Marograin. While we didn't get this in-game, I'd like to think this theory has some merit and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on one of Azeroth's most treacherous herbs. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below with your thoughts, subscribe if you're new to join the Jedi Order, and until next time, may the Force be with you.